Hi, this is Shadi. One of my teachers told me, and I really appreciate this advice, is that to be a good grappler, defense is everything. And for a very good reason, and he spoke about Kashiwazaki, and when he taught him, he told him that when he learned proper defense on the ground, he was no longer afraid of taking the fight to the ground, and hence why he became one of the best. So, speaking of a defense, I would say one of the best aspects of it, from the stand-up and all the way down to the ground, that can be manifested in so many ways, is the base, or this is what Hickson Gracie uh, calls it. This is a very old idea present in many martial arts, but today I will talk about it in the context of jujitsu. So, if we were to look at old uh, jujitsu books, this is from the Tiger Scrolls, you can see that this is what they call the self-defense stance. You can see it's somewhat of a wide stance, it can be in all directions. You can see you can face forward, the hips can go a little bit around, but it's all about anchoring yourself, pushing the hips forward. It's not about straightening your back, but rather pushing your hips uh, forward, which will block so many attacks. And so Hickson, for self-defense reasons, explains that it is great because you don't want to get toppled or at the slight of a push, you are uh, collapsed. But here he explains, for example, in his uh, self-defense unit that the directions in which uh, he is in, it's easy to get taken down on the sides, but rather if you widen your base and anchoring yourself, not standing on one straight line will be the best way possible. And of course, the hips pushing forward and anchored will strengthen your defense. Uh, link for it will be in the description. And uh, here you see, so think of a pyramid and a tower, which is easier to topple down. Of course, the tower because of the narrow base or the narrower base. So uh, this is why people admire civil engineers with their marvelous structures, because they can make something go up to the heavens while being relatively narrow below. And so all the older civilizations were all relying on pyramids. And so let's go back to the basics or the fundamentals and anchoring ourselves this way. And so here you see the hips, they they face wherever the threat is and you are anchored and you have your hands in front of you and this is where you can actually you know, be anchored and willing to defend yourself. So I've done Aikido, I'm a black belt in Aikido and one of the, I would say the most reoccurring advice I should say is keep a straight back, hips always forward and anchored down. Now the Aikido stance is somewhat narrow, I should say, but the fundamentals of the back and being anchored down and pushing forward with the hips were always there and I was always reminded of them even till the very end and uh, I never understood why or I never understood the value of such advice simply because I was not sparring. In Aikido you don't spar, you don't grapple, and so you don't really grasp the value of such teachings. And so here you see the Sugiyashi being done by Yamada, uh, Tomiki Aikido, and you see the legs somewhat spread apart, the hips always facing, anchored, etc. Now, let's take a look at this in application, standing up and also on the ground. So let's take a look at, I'd say, one of my favorite techniques, which is Uchimata Sukashi. So uh, it's a great example of how you are anchored, your hips are pushing forward, preventing any control and giving back the technique. So it's a counter to Uchimata in a sense. So when the opponent makes a move, lower your hips, and he's of course explaining don't go too far because Otherwise, you will be prone to other techniques and don't be too high and too narrow 
because you will be thrown with Uchimata. So anchor yourself low enough so the throw itself becomes insufficient or uh, useless to throw you. And so with the hips, push forward, let them and let them step or what's the word? Let them face forward, and then from there you let go by releasing your leg back and so when you push your hips forward it will give them the uh, the motivation to push harder with the leg and that's when you release your own leg and after having defended with the hips and so you pull them back and as they try to go forward and shoot harder that's when you release the defending leg and control with your hands to guide them down it is one of the most beautiful throws out there and uh, it's all done with this you know base uh, fundamental in teaching that uh, Hickson often talks about so when you see it in judo you truly grasp the value of it uh, for defense and of course proper counter and now let's go to the ground Often people talk about sweeping and you know having good guard, really pulling someone down. And what happens is you are separating the head and the spine away from the hips. But here, when you see this very fundamental guard pass, you see that it's all about maintaining proper posture, knees spread out so you don't get swept and uh, pushing with the hips forward in order to create the proper pressure to pass. So here it's all in the hips, shifting the weight and passing in order to remain dominant. But also it's very good defense once you are in a dangerous situation, such as closed guard, which is one of the most offensive guards in judo and jiu-jitsu. So this is what it means to have base, anchored, hips pushing forward. It's not about the straight back. Keeping a straight back is difficult, especially when someone is far more powerful and far more dominant with their grips, but they will never control your hips unless they have a very tight belt grip. That's a different uh, situation, but I'm talking about classical grip fighting where someone's controlling your shoulders, but they will never have control over your hips. Think of all the stuff that you learned, like shrimping and knee shield, etc. It's all about the hips and how they push in order to get you into a safe position. So if you have anything to add, let me know down below. This was Shadi. Thank you for listening.